Welcome back to another cooking video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful white and pink flower that you can use to decorate and garnish whatever food platters you have, whether it be sushi or something else. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get going. Okay, start off by taking a daikon radish, which is a big white Japanese radish. And you just want to cut a block off 7.5 centimeters long. That's three inches. And then just peel the skin off your block just by dragging the knife across the surface of it just like this, up and down until you get all the peel off just like so. There we go, great. Now take a carving knife and divide the top of your daikon block into five even segments just like this. Very smooth, soft trace cuts at the top. And now you just want to extend those trace cuts along the side of your block so you can use them for later. Okay, once you've done that, you just want to cut a small little notch in between two trace cuts as a guide. And then you just want to cut a smooth, soft curve going towards the trace cut on either side of the notch, just like this. And that will be the trace of your pedal. And you just want to do that all the way around so you end up with five equal sized petals. So just continue that. There we go. Now at the notch cut, you'd want to cut in at 45 degree angle and then the trace cut of the side of the petals, you want them to join just like this. Just to make a V shape in between two of the petals and remove some flesh. So again, where the notch is, you cut in at a 45 degree angle, and then you just remove the flesh at a 45 degree angle to the trace you just made a second ago. And just do that on both sides of the notch cut and keep going around until you have five fully developed petals. Once you've done that, then you wanna just give the petals some definition. So you start at the tip, and do a soft curve all the way down to the bottom, just like so. About one to two millimeters depth in, and then it comes back out. So you start at the tip, go a little bit in deep, and then come back out. And that gives it a little bit more three-dimensionalness to the flower, instead of just a straight side. So in and back out. Okay, so now to cut out the petals. What you want to do is just take your knife and go about two millimeters in, and cut down to the joining point of the two petals. And then cut some flesh behind it at a 45 degree angle, joining the earlier cut and removing that flesh. Just like this. Again, you just wanna cut two millimeters in and go down until the joining point of the petals. And then this cut, you wanna be very careful to not overshoot because if you overshoot, you could ruin the petal and you'd have to restart. So be very careful when you're cutting it. Just two millimeters all the way down and then make a joining cut at 45 degree angles to remove some flesh behind it, just like this. And do that to all five petals. And once you've done that, you just wanna put it on its side and remove a little bit from the top center because it's a little bit too high. And now you've got this pentagonal shape in this core, which I want to round off the corners. So I'm just gonna cut here, all the corners off it in the center core and just smooth them out a little bit. So here we go. Now to cut the petal, you just carve into it, just like this, and turn. And then just behind the petal, you just wanna remove a little bit of flesh, just like this, and then pull that part out. And now for the next petal, because it's a little bit pointy, I'm just gonna round it out with a knife. And then I'm gonna begin my next petal just overlapping the first one, just like this. And then remove some flesh again behind it, and pull that out, just like so. And continue this pattern going all the way around until you get to the center of the core of the flower. Just again, cut the petal and remove the flesh and overlapping sequence. And as you get closer into the center of the flower, you're gonna to wanna to make the petal smaller and smaller because it's gonna be less and less space and it's gonna be more realistic that way. So it gets a little bit more difficult, but just keep doing it. And at this stage here, I'm just gonna round this off a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut my next petal. Here it's becoming really tight and you have to be much smaller. So I'm just cutting a very rough petal there. And this one's a bit thick, so I'm just gonna cut it off a little bit and smooth it off just to make it a little bit thinner, just 
just like that. And then just continue doing my pedals. This is gonna be the last one here. Really tight, just try to get the best pedal you can and there you go. Okay, now you take your flower and you lay it on its side and you just wanna separate the petals. So for this, I'm just gonna take the trace cuts from earlier and define them and make them a bit more pronounced. So for that, you just cut into it and then at a 45 degree angle from one side, you cut in and at a 45 degree angle from the other side, you cut in and you create a little thin line going across that is very visible. So just do this for all the petals so that they're all separated and you can see the difference between one and the other. Great. And now for the bottom, I just want to round it off. So I'm just going to cut at a 45 degree angle, about one to two centimeter thickness here and go all the way around so that I get some curvature on the bottom. Now it's still pretty angular, so I'm just going to remove a little bit more and now curve it off by dragging the knife across really forcefully and just removing a little bit of flesh, just going all the way around. Once you've done that, you've got a bit more curvature at the bottom, which is more realistic and lifelike. Okay, now take some beetroots and make some beetroot juice. And now you're going to use this to paint your flower. Now take a paintbrush and just lay it on on the top of your flower. And the idea here is just to have more emphasis of color at the top and then dying down into a white. So just lay on the beetroot juice at the top and the sides a little bit and make sure you don't get any on the bottom of your flower. So here again, just lay it in there. Don't worry about adding too much. There's not really a risk of doing that. Just keep laying it in and just try to avoid putting any on the bottom. Now that it's more or less covered, you just want to take this and rinse it underneath a tap just to soften that color up because we added a lot of beet reduce there and it was very, very emphasized. Now you've got a beautiful light pink at the top going to a nice white. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more on the tips just to give it some contrast. Now on the outside, you can use your finger to just brush in and just shade it in so that it's not too strong. And so it sort of dies down from a hard pink to a soft white. And there we go, that's it. Now just to present it, you can lay this on a little bit of parsley, just make a little bed of parsley going all the way around and then just lay your flower on top, done. So there we go, that's how you make a beautiful white and pink flower that you can use to garnish whatever you want. Now you can make the flower out of whatever you want, it doesn't have to be daikon. You can use potatoes or carrots or anything really solid that you can carve into. Now regarding the inside of the flower, I know it's a bit hard to see with the video because it's white and very bright, but I made a carrot rose before that used the same sort of technique. If you want, check that out by clicking on the top left corner of your screen and you can really see with the carrot how to carve the petals more effectively. Thank you for watching, see you guys next week, goodbye.